Hello, welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This time we're going to have a closer look at the front tilting steering mechanism on my tilting Velomobile project, um, just to let you have a closer look at some of the details, some of the things I've not shown on previous videos that you might be interested in. The first bit to point out is the steel bell crank mechanism that I've finished. This is welded up from square section steel tube with a bit of plate uh, welded top and bottom. Um, so this is what I've called the bell crank in some of my previous videos. Here we've got a 6mm rod end bearing, 8mm here with the misalignment spacers fitted to give the angle of articulation. This one only has to move like that so it doesn't need the misalignment spacers. This is a left hand thread here so I've made these left hand M6 nuts, locking nuts, and the steering arm, to remember to turn it the opposite direction, steering arm screws onto here and is locked in place by that locking nut. So there's going to be two steering rods, one left and one right. So moving up to the top of the linkages here, this is the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter rod end with the misalignment spacers that I showed you in my last video. Um, we've got two M8 nuts left and right and a length of threaded M8 rod going through holding it together. I might replace this by a slightly better steel or stainless steel cap screw in due course. You can see that I've chosen to align the rod ends vertically like this. So in essence you've got unlimited tilt from that respect. If I take you down to the steering arms here, uh, I've chosen to fit the outer end of the steering rod end in the horizontal position. Uh, this is mainly just to make the design easier, no other reason than that. I've actually got enough articulation in the rod ends with the misalignment spaces to have fitted those either way round um, and not limit either the steering or the tilting angle. However this is the rod end here that does actually limit the tilt to something like 30 degrees. I'll measure that in a minute. So another bit that I've been working on since the previous videos is the mounting for the um, for the drum brakes. So I've welded on this little stud here which I've threaded M6. I'll just take that bolt out uh, and I'll show you how the brake drums fit on in a second. Um, I've also made a couple of these which are 12 millimeter steel rods drilled through just to give a little bit of lightness. I could probably have drilled that out a little bit more um, but this is the stub axle for the front right wheel. I haven't got a video of me drilling that hole through the axle because it would be even more boring to watch than it was to do but um, it took me some time to do that. So the axle fits into the bush like so. Then you've got, I think it's the right way around, you've got this spacer which slides on like that. 
then the drum brake goes on next through there and then there's the inner spacer it goes that way around in fact the inner spacer slides on like so and then the drum brake is secured in place with this M6 cap screw which screws into that threaded bush as I showed you a second ago I'll just screw that up finger tight for now so that's how the drum brake fits in position the braking arm is there so that's the action of the drum brake like so I've got a couple of these things one left one right these are can't remember what these are called but basically what they are is the cable guides for the drum brake cable slots in like that it's a little bit disappointed with that fit actually it's a very loose fit um, not quite sure if I can do anything about that but I'll have a think about whether I can add a, a spacer or something to lock that in place but anyway it's not going anywhere um, the brake cable will go down through there and attach to the other end of that arm there and these things are the cable locks so the cable will go through that hole there be locked off by screwing that up uh, and that fits in the bottom of the braking arm like so so that's how the drum brake fits on the left hand wheel fits naturally enough in exactly the same way And the wheel simply slides onto the axle like so. It should do. There you go, one wheel. It's now out of balance, so I'll go and fit the one to the other side. And to secure the wheels in place, I've got these quick release levers, which I'll fit now. This is why I drilled the hole through the centre of the axle predominantly. QR lever goes through the hole in the axle like so. And that bit screws on the outside. I'm going to probably make some lower profile nuts for this because it protrudes outside the limits of the wheel. And I want to put a little end cap over there to make it look a bit neater. Basically works in the same way as any other quick release lever would on a bike. So there you go, that's quite a neat solution I think, seems to work and the QR levers can be angled back for increased aerodynamics. And this is the bit here where I was talking about the fact that it sticks out beyond the edge of the wheel so you can get little end caps that fit in the hole in the centre of the wheel there so I might make some smaller nuts to allow the end cap to go on a bit more neatly. Brakes work. So coming around to the front view this is the tilting mechanism all working quite neatly now and you've got the steering all pretty neat. I've been aiming for a tilting angle of about 30 degrees so if I measure that with this little protractor I'll put 30 degrees on there so that more or less is the maximum tilting angle and even at that angle we've got pretty good steering action we're not reaching the limits of the steering angle just coming back to the bell crank you can see that I've got these aluminium plates which are bolted through with cap screws um, the vertical tube which the bell crank is welded to uh, is fitted with pins top and bottom and there are ball races top and bottom that hold that in place and give it a nice free low friction movement. Another thing to show you coming right down to ground level is I had to adjust the lower wishbones whatever you call these pieces um, to give an angled inclination to the outboard bracket. Uh, the reason I had to do this was because I was having clearance problems here um, when I was getting to maximum tilt angle so to avoid those clearance problems I cut out this piece of wood 
glued it back in with epoxy resin and that has solved the problem. The other thing to point out while we're down here is these brackets which hold the ends of the wishbones. Um, I'm going to pass a jubilee clip all the way around there, drill a hole through the body uh, front to back and just to make sure that those don't come off um, because they're glued on and they're pinned through with a wooden glued dowel. Um, but my confidence that those aren't going to come off is pretty low so by putting that strap around it that will hold those nice and securely. So one of the next jobs is going to be to sort out the front brake cables. Uh, I'm going to have the cables operated by a single brake lever so I need a splitter box. So I've made this little box which is two aluminium plates drilled and tapped front and back. Um, that's going to be mounted about here. Uh, the brake cable is going to enter from the back, be split into two using that little uh, thing and then two brake cables will exit here one to the right wheel one to the left wheel so this is just a, a sort of balancer so that will make sure that the cable tension is equal on both the left and the right wheel and I've got a pile of brake cable outers and inners that I'm going to use to rig that up so that'll be one of the next jobs um, might include that in one of my future videos one of the other jobs I'm going to be doing soon is trying to fare off some of these sharp edges. So round those off a bit, a bit of rounding off here. Um, not too worried about the aerodynamics because this is just a prototype, but uh, hopefully it'll make it look a little bit neater and you get that cool effect with the plywood where you see all the different layers. Also the wood has actually got a bit of mould on it, so this whole thing before I do the final assembly will be properly sanded down and neither oiled or painted in some way. These steel uprights will be painted of course, give them a good wire brushing to get rid of all the rust and any imperfections um, and then those will be painted to stop them rusting. I might paint these bits as well, all these various steel brackets um, and there are screw threads which need to be shortened and filed off just for neatness and to save those extra few grams of weight. I'm going to be fitting some kind of tilt limiting device as well, just a, a stop so that the limits of the tilt and the steering aren't actually taken up by the rod ends but uh, you know, come to rest against something a little bit more substantial so that we don't over strain these parts. Just looking down here at the inner end of the tie rods um, I've made a left hand threaded M8 nut left and right uh, so we have a left hand thread on the inside end of the tie rod and a right hand thread on the outside end so that when you twist the tie rod like so it adjusts its length and adjusts the tracking of the steered wheels. I need some left hand threaded locking nuts to go with the left hand threaded uh, rod ends on the tie rods. Um, now any normal person would just buy these but they're actually quite expensive because they're so rare and for the price of a couple of left hand nuts I bought these bits of hexagonal section stainless steel and I'm going to make my own nuts. And this is what I'm going to make, an M8 left hand threaded nut times two and a couple of M6 left hand threaded nuts. The M8 ones are 13 millimetres across flats and 6 millimetres deep or high and the M6 ones are 10 mil across flats and about 5 millimetres high. So that's about it for this time. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, as I say, just intended to be a quick update on progress and let you have a closer look at some of the bits and pieces. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave any comments or questions down below. It's always good to get feedback and different opinions. If you think I've got anything wrong, then again, please shout and let me know. See you next time. Thank you.